So the learning objectives that we have right now, first of all, the mental projection. And there's going to be some examples here where I literally will call out when someone's going to peek you. And you'll be able to get this down from practice and just sort of being aware of what's happening first. The other thing that we're going to talk about is your omen ult, which I'm not sure if you had a chance to look at my TikTok video on omen ults yet. But I severely underuse one on defense. It's underused the entire game. I think you use it once yeah. <laughs> in yeah, this whole sense. vibe. So we're going to look at some uh, opportunities for that and we'll also get Evans perspective on those things. We're going to talk about utility timing. I call this protocol the order of operations. Typically, if someone throws a utility, you throw a utility back at them. You typically don't want to dry peak, but there are situations that you're going to have to do it. It's just going to pop up at some point. Okay, so this first round, we're going to be looking at mental projection and utility usage as being one of the primary things. First thing first, we always want to have a mental image of where our teammates are at because we can't have our eyes glued on the minimap all the time, right. but we always want to have a mental image of where people are at. So we have an idea idea of how long it takes to rotate if they're coming in for us because then your pacing and where you're going to be standing is going to dictate that right for example a spot that you probably want to play if you want to stick to being an anchor would be right on the stairs and that way you can fall back into a safe spot and create some space for your team to rotate back in spot that you could play is obviously back ct and then play for a retake so that would be played right from around here in this angle. And then you just fall back and you play and retake with your team at that point. So there's lots of different options that you have here. Now, we're gonna talk more about utility here. Whenever you're going to flash for your team, we need to make sure that we're ready to actually use it. Yeah, I totally did not look at the wall there. I just assumed that was... We, we didn't get information on the wall. No one said anything about the wall either. So I, I'm going to give you a break on this one. But we also want to make sure that we're in position. So I would say flashing site, three, two, one or whatever you're going to need to do to be able to make sure that they communicate that, hey, we can't go yet, or they along those lines, okay? Because with that flash, we don't get much uh, we get nothing value. Out of that. Yeah, yeah we don't get as much value as we needed to here. So thoughts on the positioning, Devin, before we go forward? I think it is very scary, <clears throat> especially playing Omen. Like if you're on Gadulus or whatever, this, this is fine. Like you can get out, but here, like if two people run into the smoke, you're dead. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, I think if you're going to be playing in that smoke, you need to be actively asking your KO for flashes so that you can make plays off of it. Who on your team can you pair your Omen ult with? Fade or KO? Fade. I'm trying to think. Very good. Okay. Fade's, Fade's a good a one. Good one. Fade. Rather, I'm assuming it's because like you dog them, they can't hear you ult, but I don't know if that's what you're thinking of. So there's a lot of different things, right? So if he ults, they can't hear anything. So pairing the alt with fade off of that makes it deaf, makes them deafened so that you can get into a spot that they can't quite hear. The the big thing with comboing the fade and nominal is like they can know your ult thing, right? But they can't hear where your ult thing at all. So like, it, for example, yeah. if, if I'm attacking, uh, let's say we're going A, if my teammate fade ults all of A, I could literally TP like anywhere onto A behind them and they would have no idea. Question, how yep. do you smoke a retake on BSN besides smoking main? I never have any idea what to do with these smokes. You can smoke like arches but, or like backside, but it just feels like a really, there's just small little chokes, if you can even call them chokes. Smoking it just feels weird and awkward. I never know how to use my smokes here, except for main, of course. It's ultimately what fights you want to take. If you okay. cover off these areas, then you're covering off any long range fights from here and you need closer range fights. You can throw it even closer if you wanted to like cover this spot and you can path in through here and wrap around and clear. Okay. I was just going to say like the smoke you threw on back right is really good if your teammates coming out of spawn, for example, because it blocks the sight line of that angle for you guys to be able to like come out of spawn safely without having to like you know, just get mowed down by like three people. And then you can clear like logs, close market, lane. And then after that, you can progress on the site. You know, there's a lot of different options, but you kind of gotta get creative. The key to learning about on angles versus off angles is that when someone strafes out and clears a specific angle, let's say for, for example, for you? let's say this one right here. Yeah. If you hold this right here, which is like straight down the choke, I would consider that an on angle because they're going to come out and clear that spot. Now, the way to determine where a good off angle will be, where they're not going to expect you or have pre-aim on you, is to think about how people like to path into the bomb site. Oftentimes, you will see these three pathings. There might be other ones like teleports and all sort of stuff, but generally speaking, you're going to see those three those three paths. Now, what you want to think about is if you're trying to hold an off angle on a rush, for example, you want your first fight to happen right about here to catch this guy. And after you kill that guy, then you can flick out and take a fight on this one or take a fight on the guy going switch. 
Okay, these are all angles they're not expecting, and you got to think about it from their perspective. When they're running into the bomb site, or when you're running into the bomb site, how do you feel when you get to this point right here on the map? I'm kind of just flicking all around. Just mostly holding heaven, I'd say, is the most common thing to hold. But sometimes you're flicking all around. You you mentioned it right sometimes away. Sometimes you're just like you have right? no idea where you're going. You're just like. Yeah, anxious. you're feeling you're feeling anxiety. Beautiful. You're feeling anxious. So this is the point in time. If you remember what they're feeling like, this is what I want to do. I want to hit them right at this moment because if I was in that situation right now, this is how I would feel, right? So, so be, what's with the whole on angle idea? Let's say I smoked mm -hmm. off choke, right? My biggest concern is getting flashed and not being. Able, I I don't think I'm good enough at dodging flashes yet that I can just safely say, "Oh, I'll just dodge it." My concern with on angles is that if I get flashed. I'm just gone. Whereas if I play off like sound cues, I can play off my flash. So, um, how do you feel about that? The key is to have an escape route. Okay. Escape route. So if you're playing left side dice, for example, you can play it from a sliver and just sort of like hold that on angle for a little bit. Okay. And then from there, if they throw a flash through, you just path that direction. Get behind the wall at that point. Okay. okay? So you have your escape route at that point. So you throw, carefully, you did see a smoke get thrown here, which is an indication that they could be rushing in. So, smoke is there, and as soon as you threw that smoke, I would have been out in the open. They just threw a utility in, I'd be probably throwing a flash at this point, responding right away. You knew it was a rush, or a possibility of a rush, right here. There. That little bit of information right there. The smoke, okay. They're not just throwing that for their good health. They're throwing it for a reason. Okay. They're throwing that smoke for a reason. Okay, so I love this round. I love this round. Here's what I would do. I would tuck here in the corner until KO takes contact. That's the first thing, okay? And then you could use him as a, hey, KO, can you flash for me? Sort of thing. So you can use his flashes to peek with. Let's see how this plays out. The first thing that you need to think about that you might not even be aware of with Omen is the direction of where you throw your smokes will appear to them. So let's say, yeah. for example, you have Phoenix looking right here and he's looking let's there. Let's see it came from wine and he'll... Yeah, he's even like, oh, I think, I think Omen's wine. In this case, we're going to see Ray's you so it was actually raise so watch this i'm not saying that this is what killed you but it's possible no i've had to think about that before yeah because he came out pretty confidently that you were there you know this guy was, yeah. this guy was flying you being in wine is a powerful position and you being hidden in wine is also extremely powerful because the entire time they're worried about the section now they may clear you with nades, and may clear you with all these different things, but guess what? You have utility. You have a very special ability called the Omen Ult that can get you out of those situations. You also have this one. TP. You've heard of the Omen Ult? I, occasionally, some guy was telling me that I should try it out sometime. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll give him a chance. Yeah, he's a pretty good looking guy. I've heard about this person. You have tons of, tons <laughs> yeah, of utility. Is like Devin, I think? Was it? Oh, okay. Now I see how it is. <laughs> all right. All right. VOD's officially <laughs> over. VOD's officially over. Forget it. <laughs> I'm gonna start this round off with, for the love of God, please use your ult. <laughs> the odds are not looking too great. <laughs> no, it's the not. Statistics are not in my favor. <laughs> this is an example of a really, really good bait and switch that you do here. I believe, I can't remember the round exactly. Can you come closer to yeah. me? If you hear them, just like, Mr. Ult it, I'm gonna TP in this corner. I'm gonna start off by saying, not every round has to be a TikTok clip. Let's watch it. <laughs> if they're here. How did it for the VOD? Good! You paired a fade alt with the TP. Very good. They know that. where yeah. you're coming from. They know where you are. They should know. I think this is another big thing with the whole like punishment thing. Because I do know that when like, the smokes show you where, I've just never gotten punished. And I think I need to really... yeah. <laughs> There was no reason I got through there, but like, we'll take it. I, dude, I laughed so hard when I first watched it. I was like, oh my god. And then I saw this. Why? <laughs> overheat, <laughs> overheat. Oh no. I think I, think I said it too, but I was like, oh, I got greedy. <laughs> I overheated, my bad. Let's not tell this.
<laughs> he calls it out. You, you call yourself out on your own shit. That's good. Offense. This is where mental projection comes in. Have you heard uh, mental projection? Have I talked to you about this before? You explained it kind of, yeah. Just okay. predicting enemies and where fights are going to come in and whatnot. So what you want to be thinking about is mentally go from left to right across the map. Where do you think people are going to play? I wrote it up on my stream already. I wrote 212. Generally is what you're going to see a lot. Especially at this rank where people are just going to be playing like one thing. Okay. So a 212 is two towards A, one towards mid, and two towards B generally okay other setups you're going to see is three one one which coincidentally was some of your setups one thing that you can do here we do this on c1 throw a flash here um, to clear this yeah. entire angle so that when they're running up it's a little bit easier for them use this alt to clarify how many people are on b site just alt right into the middle just go like this and just like look around just do a spin do a 360 and they'll all appear on the yeah. on the mini map and all of a sudden they're like oh there's four people in there we should probably go to a you know is just use it. You can treat your omen ult as a dart sometimes. Okay, so once again, a couple of things that we need to be focusing on, the omen ult, obviously. Your yeah. mental projection, those are the big <laughs> ones that I want you to really focus on. And the last one is utility timing how to use it, when to use it, the order of operations. Those are the big three for you. Whenever you're confused about how to use utility, just take a notepad, literally take a pen and paper. I know I'm old, I'm using pen and paper, <laughs> but write down everything you can use it for, right? Just say omen ult underscore. What am I gonna write? Just write down, see how many you can think of. If you can come up with like 20 of them, you're gonna be in a much better place. You can always reach out to me. Thank you so much for your time and I'm, I hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully I remember to fix my X key and get it unstuck. Yeah, definitely switch that up. <laughs>